partiality. He accepts no brides. He is a friend to the fatherless and the widow. Our God is full of mercy and compassion. Shabbat Shalom today, August 7, 2020. Let us pray before we enter the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father in heaven, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made and for the joy that you have put in our hearts that we shall rejoice in it. We thank you for your love and kindness, especially the kindness you showed to us when Jesus died on the cross for our sins to secure our salvation. We thank you. Father, we even thank you for this adversity that we are in right now. We know that it is for our good, O oh God, give us strength, build more faith in us, for faith comes by hearing. As we hear and read your word today, bless us in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are getting into our study now on this Shabbat. And I am just so glad that everyone is here with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Not only you and my own company, but also that our Heavenly Father is in the audience. Jesus is here with us today, listening to everything. Listening to your thoughts. Be careful. <laughs> I have heard your prayer, the Lord says. Praise God. Praise God. We are so happy today. And uh, we have been studying the illness of King Hezekiah. And we are extracting every piece of knowledge we can from this story because this story has been a great encouragement to us during these difficult times. We shall not be shaken in our faith. We shall not die, but we shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let us get our, our Bible and we shall read. I'm getting my Bible. Let us read Isaiah chapter 38, verses 9 through 22. This is where we left off. Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 to 22. A writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. I said, in the prime of my life, must I go through the gates of death and be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, I will not again see the Lord, the Lord in the land of the living. No longer will I look on mankind or be with those who now dwell in this world. Like a shepherd's tent, my house has been pulled down and taken from me. Like a weaver, I have been rolled up. My life has been cut off from the loom. Day and night, you made an end of me. I waited patiently till dawn. But like a lion, he broke all my bones. Day and night, you made an end of me. I cried like a swift or thrush. I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew weak as I looked to the heavens. I am troubled, O oh Lord, come to my aid. But what can I say? He has spoken to me and he himself has done this. I will walk humbly all my years because of this anguish of my soul. Lord, by such things men live and my spirit finds life in them too. You restored my health 
and let me live. Hallelujah. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. For the grave cannot praise you. Death cannot sing your praise. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they praise you as we are doing today. Fathers tell their children about your faithfulness. The Lord will save me and we will sing with stringed instruments all the days of our life in the temple of the Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise God Lord. for his holy word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have in this story Hezekiah's prayer of thanksgiving. Hezekiah's thanksgiving song, which he penned, he wrote by divine direction after his recovery from his illness. This occasion was extraordinary. Hallelujah. It was beyond belief to him, and his heart was full of devotion and affection towards God because he had seen death approaching and God turned him around and headed him towards life. He saw death approaching and he was headed to death and God turned him around by healing him and he was headed towards life, amen. So the praise he offered, the love he offered to God was very natural and was very genuine, hallelujah. I ask you a question. It's early on to ask questions, but we only have 30 minutes. Have you ever put your thanksgiving to God in writing? Hezekiah put his thanksgiving in writing so that we might all review it afterwards and be revived considering the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that if we are ever sick and dying, we would have this testimony to fall back on, not only sickness, but any stress or distress, knowing that God can turn the situation around 180 degrees. I'm talking about journaling. It is good to keep a record of what is going on in our lives, to recount how God has helped us, saved us, saved us from certain disaster, at times. It is good to record how God has healed us when death was around the corner. It is good to write a memorial of our affliction and the thoughts we had during our illness, our trials, and how God released us from it. I encourage you today, if you don't already, so that it may never be forgotten. All right, class, we have homework today before the Shabbat is over let us all write a letter of thanksgiving to God let us write a sure covenant with him and seal it to promise ourselves and to promise God that now more than ever before we have learned to know him in such a way that we will not return to folly or our past ways one more thing if you have children, share this Thanksgiving letter with them because the scripture says that parents tell their children about your faithfulness. All right, you got your homework assignment? Amen. So Hezekiah left us an excellent writing and we have titled this lesson, Thanksgiving is good, but thanks living is better. You got it? Thanksgiving is good, but thanks living is better. To live a life of thanks and gratitude, that's good. Thanksgiving is good, but thanks living is better. You know, there's a song, and my son wrote the song, Christopher Watson. The name of the song is uh, I'm Grateful. And you can find that on YouTube. You can Google that after the service. 
But some of the words say, you have shown me a better life, walking by your side endlessly. Thanksgiving is good. Thanks living is better. So let's examine what Hezekiah preserves in his record. First of all, he talks about the deplorable condition that he was in when his disease was taking over him and he despaired of any recovery. That's in verses 10 to 13. He tells us what his thoughts were of himself when he sat at his worst and he kept these in remembrance. He was despondent. He thought he was gonna be gone soon. In fact, as we say, he was a goner. Yes, he was. <laughs> but as long as there is life, there is hope. As long as there is life, there is hope. If there is one breath left in a person, there is hope and there is room for our prayer and for God's mercy. God is sovereign for sure, but as long as there is life, there is hope. Remember, God sends his rain to water the earth for the just and the unjust. As long as there is life, there is hope, my friends. Even when we think we're goners or someone else is a goner, we can't stop praying because as long as there is life, you say, there, there is hope. hope. Amen. Amen. There is room for prayer and room for God's mercy. His sickness was a summons to the grave. But the lower we are, the more God can raise us up. The lower we are, the more God can raise us up. Raise us up, O oh God, to dwell in your presence. So the first point is that he remembered the deplorable condition he was in when he was sick. And that as long as there is life, there is hope. Amen. Amen. Secondly, he reminded himself of the apprehensions he had of death approaching. Death was approaching him and he was approaching death. So he reminded himself of that apprehension. And thirdly, he magnified the power of God in restoring him when his state was so desperate. He exalted God's goodness in being so much better to him than his own fears. God is so much better to us than our own fears. King David too kept a journal. We read them all in the Psalms of times when he was delivered out of trouble. He reflected back upon black and melancholy conclusions that he had come to when he was in a destitute state and what he had said in his haste. I shall cite two examples here. Psalm 31 and verse 22. You don't have to turn there. I'm going to read it right here. He said, in my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Another example, again, Psalm 77, verses 7 to 9. David says, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? This all seems absurd, but David is wondering if God forgot to be merciful, if the all merciful God somehow forgot that he is merciful. It is absurd, but have you ever felt that way? I think we all have. I think we have all wondered if God just forgot to be merciful on our behalf. You see, the Psalms are David's journal and they reflect real emotions. But David always concluded in praise when he came to his senses, after he expressed his emotions to God, he always praised God, praised God for who he is, 
Praise God for his greatness. Praise God for his power. Praise God for his majesty. Praise God for his pardon and acceptance and exaltation of his children. Praise God. As Christopher's song says, he knows be my name. I'm grateful. Praise God. Holy Father, you have spoiled us by lavishly pouring out your riches upon us and your fondness. You have covered us with love and with grace. Praise God. You know, you know what I, I like the most about being a child of God? Yes, I like to talk about his great power, his unfathomable knowledge and so forth. So many expletives that we can use about God. But what I admire the most is how God is always with me. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. 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 Okay. Back to the text in context. Back to Hezekiah's journal. So, Hezekiah remembered his poor condition. He reminded himself of his apprehension as death was approaching him. He magnified God who restored him and pledged to live a life of thanksgiving and thanks living. Amen. Now let's move to verses 11 to 14. These verses are very poetic. Let's look at verse 12 particularly because he reflected on his body where his soul was residing. You know that um, all of us are a little nuts. Okay, before you turn me off, let me explain it. All of us are like peanuts. <laughs> our body is our shell. And what really matters is what's on the inside. That's what Mr. Peanut said. So Hezekiah compared the residence of his soul to a shepherd's tent. A shepherd is on duty, trusted by God to carry out his duties here on earth. But a tent can be taken down by removing a pin or two. So he stated like a shepherd's tent, my house has been pulled down and taken from me. Hezekiah is just a poet here. He adds another similitude. Like a weaver, he has cut me off from the, from the loom. Well, let's move here to verse 14. This is a good one. Like a crane or swallow, so did I chatter. I made a noise as those birds do when they are frightened. Now, our prayers certainly change with affliction. There was a time I was invited to a Baptist church to pray for Mother's Day. You should have been there. I practiced this prayer. I was like, oh, thou creator of the great heavens and the earth, thou majestic in holiness. Man, you would have thought I was the Pope, okay? <laughs> However, how many of us can testify that our prayers are not the same at times of affliction? We turn into blind Bartimaeus. Oh Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> so verse 14 refers to Hezekiah's prayers during affliction. It was so broken and interrupted with groanings that could not be uttered that it was more like the chattering of a crane or a swallow. And yet his prayers were acceptable to God and successful, I might add, because the Lord said, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. He mourned like a dove, sadly and almost silently, and yet his prayer was acceptable to God and successful. I have heard your prayer 
I have seen your tears. Thank you, O oh God, for hearing us. Thank you for counting all our tears. Let's go to verse 15 before we depart today. Time is running away from us. Let's go to verse 15, the grateful acknowledgement that our king makes of God's goodness to him in his recovery. He begins this part of the writing as one wondering how to express himself. What shall I say? What can I say? He has spoken to me and he himself has done it. When God answered his prayer, all Hezekiah could do was praise God. Hallelujah. He knew it was all the Lord's work, both in word and in deed. He has spoken and he has done it. Hallelujah. So Hezekiah was speechless. What shall I say? What shall I say? God has spoken and it is done. Amen. Oh Lord, by such things men live and in all of them my spirit finds life. You have restored me to health and let me live. By your word, Lord, do we live and our spirit finds life in your word. And you have restored me and let me live. Life is to be found in God's word. He has spoken and he himself has done it. The more we hear God's word for faith comes by hearing, the more we taste of his loving kindness, the more our hearts are enlarged to love him, to live in him, to hear him even more and that will be our life. Thanksgiving and thanks living. Psalm 18 verse 19 states, he delivered me because he delighted in me. God's love was sufficient to bring Hezekiah from the pit of corruption as God's love delivers us too from many a pit. God's love delivers us from many troubles. Of course, the greatest pit we were in, I'm referring to the pit of death and hell, he delivered us by redemption, by Jesus Christ our Lord. In his love and his pity, he redeemed us. Remember, remember, remember when Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. God redeemed us from the pit, amen, through the power of Jesus Christ. I think we need to stop here and just praise God. What can I say? What can I say? You have redeemed me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is one last point that we want to make. And that is in verse 17, when Hezekiah said, surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. Whoa, we need a drink after that. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. Hezekiah here acknowledges that it was for his own good that he went through these experiences. He has learned from them the importance of life, as in verse 15, when he said, I will walk humbly all my years because of this anguish of my soul. But he also rejoices because he now knows that God has canceled out the effect of his sin out of pure love for him. God has canceled out the effect of our sin out of pure love for us. Hezekiah recognizes that had it not been for the suffering he had undergone, he would never have truly experienced this forgiveness so fully. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. So overall, Hezekiah acknowledges 
that the experience has been good. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. Now that is something. Thanksgiving and thanks living. Therefore, here is the challenge for all of us. Don't forget your homework. Don't forget to journal this Shabbat. You could even write, write a comment at the end of this lesson. Get it over with right away. <laughs> Therefore, here is the challenge for us. To tell the truth, it's easy to thank God for the good stuff. And although some of us don't even do that, but that's okay. You know, we have food, we have clothing, we have a place to lay our head. It's easy to thank God for the good stuff. That challenge is to acknowledge and to live gratefully for the problems, the difficulties, and the afflictions that we are suffering right now. It is certainly for our benefit that we suffer such anguish. And therefore, we should live lives of thanksgiving and thanks living. The living, the living, they shall praise thee, O Lord, as we are doing this day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you have been blessed by this lesson. <clears throat> We will end with our ironic benediction. Hallelujah. Don't forget your homework. You have homework.